How to do a quick melting effect in Blender. I'm Jordan Needham, this is Jham 3 d and that lens flare is kind of cinematic. I gotta keep my head like right here or it's just gonna blind you guys, but it's also kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. So of course we need an object to demonstrate this effect on. I'm just gonna add in a cylinder, scale that down a little bit. We're gonna make like a simple crown. So here we are, tab into edit mode. I'm gonna click both these faces, hit E to extrude. Make sure that your proportional editing is not on, of course. S to scale in, X to delete these faces, and then let's press 1 to go into vertex selection. Shift, Alt, click both these rings of vertices, and then let's right click, go to loop tools, hit bridge. I think loop tools is an add-on built into Blender, so if you didn't see that, uh, go into your preferences and enable that add-on, but it might already be there. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Anyways, so this is going to be our basic crown. We're going to press one to go into front view, and then I know it looks like shit, right? That's a terrible crown. Let's hit control two, and then I'll put a subsurface modifier on that with a level of two. Let's right click shade smooth. Okay, now we got a pretty basic sort of ring of a crown. Maybe a halo is a better way to say it, actually. Let's go back into front view by pressing one. Okay, now I'm going to shift D to duplicate this object. And I'm going to hide our original one in our outliner up here. And now I'm going to apply on our new duplicated cylinder, our halo. I'm going to apply this subdivision surface on there. And now if we tab into edit mode, we have way more vertices than we would have otherwise if we would have just not applied that. Here's without that applied and then with it applied. You can tell a huge difference. Now to create this effect, it's actually really simple. Let's go down into object data properties. Under shape keys, you wanna press that plus bar once and then again, so that's two times. You always need a basis and that's basically gonna uh, document what your original mesh looked like and then the second one is what we're going to be using. Let's title this melt. And now let's tab in edit mode with this object selected. And let's select a few vertices. Doesn't really matter. This is just a demonstration, but these are the points where you're going to want the melting effect to begin and it's going to be centered there. So select where you kind of want your object to start melting. Hit O to enable proportional editing and press G because we're going to move these down and with your scroll wheel on your mouse you can control which vertices this is affecting so let's move that down a little bit descale that and then g z size this correctly and now we're just going to take this down a bunch uh maybe not too much just kind of like this so that it stays normal in most areas but in the areas where we want it to melt, it's obviously kind of drooping down. And you can bring that as far down as you want to, and that's gonna be your endpoint. So now, if we tab out of edit mode, and we have this shape key selected, we adjust the value here from zero to one, we can see that our mesh is effectively melting. This might be good for you. I mean, this is a really simple effect that might be as far as you wanna take it, but there are some ways to make this look just a little bit better. One, of course, if we hit control two again and apply a subdivision on top of this, this will smooth the mesh a bit more so that it's not so jagged when it's melting. And then to animate this, it's super simple. We just go to frame one, Let's change our end frame to 60. Let's click right here to add a frame. And then let's go to frame 60 and max this out at one. Now, if we press spacebar to play back, boom, we have a melting effect. Now we can do one more thing, which is to just show you the power of shape keys. And I love shape keys because they can be non-destructive. If you're using them right, that's the whole purpose is that you can manipulate your mesh in a non-destructive manner so that you always have that base mesh. Super cool. I don't want to go too deep into shape keys, but let's press plus again. And this is going to be key two. Let's name this melting two or maybe like melting detail. Okay, and now let's tab in edit mode. Let's select a few other vertices. Doesn't really matter, it's just a demonstration. And now if we go up to this fall off up here in our proportional editing, we can see we have all these different options to choose from and how we want our fall off to work. Smooth works great, especially to start off with, but if we want to add sort of a detailed effect with this melting, 
we can click random and that's gonna be randomized, of course. And now if we press G, Z and bring these down a bit, you can see how we start to get this effect. And obviously that might be a little too insane for this, but hey, I'm just showing you some options that you have. And now the really cool thing is we can mix these shape keys and animate them both at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna animate this at uh, frame one. I'm gonna add a keyframe at frame one, and then let's go to 60. And we don't even have to use all of it. We can just say like, maybe we want just 30% of it. So we can, if we go 0.3, this will slowly add on to our melting effect. Just to show you a little bit better of a result, here is something that I was working on just before this video. Look at that. Okay, so let's say you want it to have an effect on the material, the way that the uh, actual material of the object looks as it's starting to melt. One thing we can do, we can go to our shader editor right here. Let's go ahead and open this up. And I'm gonna try to simulate the fact that it's heating up and then beginning to melt. So if we shift A, add in a mix RGB, we can hover over this color right here Control C to duplicate it, and then Control V to paste it in our color one. Let's go ahead and paste it in our color two as well and plug this into the base color. You're not gonna see a change yet. Let's go to color two and let's make this something like red, something closer to the red hue. If we play with the slider, we can see it starts to get red as we increase the factor. Okay, now if we add a color ramp, copy this color two, and put it at the black value right here and plug in color to that and then shift a add in a layer weight node and plug this facing in right here and that's going to kind of accentuate the red part or the color change from whichever way you're looking at it so i'm looking at it through my camera lens so face on it is the reddest part right there and the reason i'm doing it that way is to show that perhaps there's a heat source uh, directly in front or from this direction that's causing the object to heat up and melt now actually it's probably best if we just remove the white and change it copy this color up here and paste it into your white value and now if we click this mix shader we can open up another panel right here another window and change this to a timeline with this mix shader selected if we bring the factor all the way down add in a keyframe let's go to frame 60 and then um factor at one and I to add a keyframe, if we play this back, it starts to heat up and melt at the same time. It's, it's not perfect. Again, not a perfect effect, but certainly if you've ever seen like metal melt before, it is something that kind of tends to happen. It does simulate the effect a little bit. I hope you guys can create something cool with this. If you do, share your work with me on Instagram. That's jham.3d. And if you want to be a part of a community which is built to support human artists of the future amidst this AI art revolution, please hit that like and subscribe button so you stay updated on this channel. We are going to be launching that community in just a little bit. If you're really interested, you can ask for an invite down below and I may give it to you. I'm Jordan Needham. This is jham3d and I'll catch you next time.